Hello and welcome to Painting is a Four-Letter Word, Episode 2. Just like last time, this is a uh, audio capture of a group of guys who get together in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada on a monthly basis to do some painting and model building and uh, shoot the breeze about the latest uh, happenings in the industry and uh, topics about uh, uh, games that we enjoy playing. Uh, tonight you're going to hear about... Uh, Drop Zone, Drop Fleet, uh, 40K, and several other topics. And uh, my hope is that you're listening to this while you're doing your own painting project at home and uh, you're just looking for a little white noise in the background while you're doing that. So uh, tonight you're going to hear from myself, Kevin Barrett, Tom, Ward, Mike, Steve, and Barry. And uh, so I uh, hope you enjoy it. All right. Okay. Maybe, maybe Dave just participated for half of that. Wasn't there for the rest? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> Men mentally, he checked out. He's like, I'm losing. I'm done. <laughs> I don't know if you, you have met Dave. For, I have not. This particular day. Uh, These are the Daves I know and of. Oh, indeed. indeed. <laughs> That's what he's doing. I'm working on humans. Human Blood 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 humans. Blood Blood humans. Humans. You've done a Shaltari drop zone yes. for us, right? Mm -hmm. What color were they done in? I did mine in purple and white. Purple and white? Yeah. Are with a teal, with the teal uh, accent? Teal accents and gems and stuff like that. You're going to do these guys the same way? I'm so thinking I probably am, yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to I'm gonna try and do a, a little bit of frosting instead of the white stark, because the fins were all stark white, and then it was purple. Yeah. I mean, something yeah. maybe I've Hello. seen a lot of the fade. That yeah. doing yeah. Something yeah. I might want to try and see what that mm, one of those looks like that way. When you say frosting, what does that mean? Oh, uh, sorry. <clears throat> uh, it's not so much frosting. It's basically you do the whole thing morning. purple and then yeah. you just kind of do a quick. Oh, you know, with an airbrush? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Around the outside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Okay, I get that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just uh, hanging out at yeah. a friend's place. But yeah, pretty much I think I'm going to do the same because it turned out well. It's just a little bit. They're really nice designs. Yeah. The Shell Tari ships. Have you seen the Battle Cruiser? It looks. Better. I did, oh, did they? The shots don't do it justice. Yeah, it looks. A lot yeah, that's weird. You get a lot of that. I mean, from a lot of different manufacturers, is their photography is like I don't know what. Yeah. Wrong thinking. angle, wrong yeah. lighting, yeah, wrong exactly. colors sometimes yeah. too can do it too, right? Yeah. That was my mom. She's like, just so you know, your work got awarded a big project. You should get your class four light uh, power engineering license and start working for the company. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> I was like, <laughs> that's your mom. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, good to good to know. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Kitty table again. Yeah, but you're not coping over this time. time. Oh, you're hanging out with me there? Man? I totally am. Nice. And, uh, and we're almost through one uh, uh, bottle of rice, but there's a backup. <gasps> I appreciate uh, all of these things. <laughs> Might as well give me a hand with that. Yeah. <laughs> Tom's always so generous that way. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mike. Yeah. I got good news for you. Oh, no. I brought drop fleet to assemble. Oh, look at you go! Whoa, that's awesome. What uh, what fleet you got? UCM. UCM. Yeah. Have you built any of it yet? No. It's uh, it's a little daunting. I wanna, yeah, the I UCM see how you actually, build yours. <laughs> it, you got to do it in the right order, but it's a lot better for seams than the scourge. Scourge just got that one horrible seam. Well, I brought the instructions. I, I, I put my transition color over top of the seam. I wasn't gonna putty it. Nothing. Yeah, so yeah. Just, that's what I did too. It's actually yeah, I went for the green to the, the purple transition right over the seam, and it'll <laughs> yeah, my, visually it'll get lost. My PHR. I'm just hoping uh, after I want, start putting yeah. some paint on, it'll be nice. No, no, it was perfect actually. It was about an ounce and a half in there. This one's got to get ready. Mr. Oh, he's an adult now. Now, now he's an adult. I think by most conventional standards, I'm officially an adult. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, from what I understand, it's like your 20s, you're still basically viewed as a child yeah. by most grown-ups. What did, what did, what did, what did uh, what'd you get? He got me, and this is going to be weird for everyone in the room. Oh, why? <laughs> It is oh, a it's a <laughs> Oh, no. Wait, is that a joke gift? No. We were talking about it on the last podcast that he was like, well, maybe I'll look at that. So, so here's the thing. I, is, this I don't, a, is this a new one? Yeah, it just Brand came new. out last weekend. But it's not the full Chaos Codex. No, it? but I've got the full Chaos Codex. This wow. is just all the rules for all of the original nine trade allegiance. Yeah, okay. And I, I don't love 40K, but I love my Iron Warriors. Uh -huh. They've been my army for... Like 14, 15 years. Uh -huh. 
And so, but they haven't had... How many had, times have they hit the game table with us, huh? In the last decade, like three. <laughs> but they haven't had good rules since 3.5. Okay. Right? Like, it's it's been one of those things where the, um, the Chaos Army was kind of left to die by Games Workshop for a really long time. Right, you got to imagine it's a say, pretty popular seller for them, so why would that happen? Because the company's fucking dumb. Ooh. But... They've been making a lot of good choices lately, and they're finally... This is something they've been talking, it's been the rumor mill for, what, like eight, nine years? To have a codex just for the Trader Legions. And they finally did it. You know, it, that's got to be exciting. You turn 30, and what's the best thing you can get for your birthday? Chaos <laughs> Codex. Chaos <laughs> Codex. <laughs> oh, just kill to me be down. fair, it was kill like Japanese down. cooking knives, but this is the case. <laughs> Hey, do you get your uh, cooking knives out of that place on White Island? Uh, yeah, that's where we got them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I broke down and I bought the uh, Wrath of Magnus. See, but do you still have a bunch of Thousand Suns models or do you sell everything? I sold everything. Mm. It's a Cheeto. Fuck! Oh, Thousand Suns, they're, uh, they're in uh, Prospera. Yeah. The new ones are nice. Did you get Prospera? Uh, no, I, I've read. I've read the book and everything, uh, but I didn't buy Prospero because it's 30k and the 40k ones have like the big Egyptian headdresses a little bit yeah. more and that sort of thing. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so. You want to do all the new ones. And anyway. the new plastics and the new Scarab Terminators. The only thing that I wish I had still was the Dreadnought, Thousand Sun Dreadnought from Forge World. Magnus is huge. He's, he looks. I cool. know. I saw him. You probably case. saw him. Yeah. Now you His understand what I said. He's like huge. When, right. When the one wingtip is higher than a an imperial knight. Yeah. <laughs> like he is a big Very guy. <laughs> oh, I'd I'd actually like I don't. But like, I would got, never play with him. But I want to thing. paint him. And our warriors are siege specialists since they actually have siege master rules again now, which they haven't had in. A long time. A couple of well, the last time they had that was the 3.5 codex in 3rd ed, and then they're currently on 7th. But is this, does this stuff even survive a new edition that's coming out in some time? It will, because the way that this works is it's based around the uh, addendums to the core uh -huh. um, codex. Yes. So if they ever update the core codex, this still applies to it. Because it's an addendum. Yeah. Right. The... Um what Nick was saying was there's like small tweaks in this and the uh, other, other Chaos books right now that tend to have him believing that the new edition is coming out next year. Uh, next year is also the 31st anniversary of, of uh, Games Workshop, which fits with the 31st millennium. So. Oh, Mike, I do have resin pieces. We were questioning whether or not I actually had Yeah, one. I asked. Well, that's the. That's, you guys have Battlecruiser if you want to take a look at it now. Or we could hit him over the head for you. That's a that's a, uh, a Kickstarter battle cruiser. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it looks like a whole bunch of pieces, but yes. So Mike, Yo. these are my frigates, hey? Yes, there's four per sprue. Okay, but you can only ever do two of one type per sprue. But if you have two sprues, you can do four of anything twice. And then these, this is one That's of the... That's a cruiser. Is this one or two? In That's here? one cruiser. And then I have... Your frigates will your build stands. Four, four frigates? Yeah, four, four, frig four frigates per yeah. sprue. Same as the Kickstarter. Yeah. Same as the starter set. I might steal your idea, though, and I might do the bases different colors for the different uh, battle groups. Oh, okay. That's an easy one. Don't your mouth will trade, is it? <laughs> yep. I'm just now teasing you. Or, I, it I, was I, there. I'll, I'll do what I want. I yes, I, I've gotten that. <laughs> I've gotten that very much. Thank so you. I have. So this way this works. I have four cruisers. Mm -hmm. I have twelve frigates and a battle cruiser. Yes. You have one starter plus. You should actually have uh, three frigate sprues. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's you should have sprues. four cruiser sprues. Yes. And then one. Cruiser sprue for the battle cruiser. With yes. yes. So that is basically one set from the starter. And that's what I have right here. Yeah. So I'm going to start with the frigates because they... S which uh, which uh, battle cruiser did you get? Avalon or the Atlantis? I, I don't know. He didn't uh, jump in the Kickstarter. It's just, oh, so it, it's it just depends on whatever brand and Brandon kickstarted. Yeah, it's whatever Brandon kickstarted. <laughs> well, no, I mean, you can tell by it. The resin bit is different. Well, you don't know this, I don't know. <laughs> you, he was just like, give me $200. You have the carriers, like, you have the Atlantis. Okay. 
I'm the only one here not working on drop zone or drop fleet. <laughs> How does that make you feel? I'm <laughs> painting Blood Bowl, so I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> I brought okay. something for you to look at, Tom. Do you? Mm -hmm. Oh, you brought the Mars Attacks? Oh, Mars Attacks. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> look, show them the little clear helmets. Yeah, like, Those are I won't badass. lie. I won't lie. That it was my favorite part. Mm. Of so I e emailed Hydra. Yeah. And uh, I started off the email with Hail Hydra. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and that afternoon oh, they got back Lord. to me. They're sending out the pieces. So you were missing the guns then. Yeah. Yeah. After I opened up everything, I had just the rank and file guys were missing their heads and their guns. Oh, Jesus. okay. Jesus. Yeah. So that's. It seems like a pretty significant error, packing error. Yeah, but if they responded back same day, that's better than ninety percent of the companies out there. Same same day, the big robots no problems, the mini robots no problems, the flying robots no problems, the characters, the no, characters problems. no problems, the heavy weapons robots no problems, just the regular rank and file little dinky ray guns. So, okay. So my happy uh, G Dub story of the week. I'm on the Blood Bowl community list, and the guys are. The two main guys are interacting with the community quite a bit, but there's lots of guys acting like what you're saying on the hawk, where they're they're like, oh, why isn't this out, or why don't we know this, and oh, oh uh, this should, and just being whiny, eh? Yeah. yeah. So I actually sent them a note and said, you know, thanks for doing what you're doing and interacting with the community, and this is awesome. I mean, this is this is rejuvenated my interest in my interest in Games Workshop stuff. Did well, you actually do that. I, I'm mm -hmm. just as prone to this as anyone else, but there's a certain level of, um, of Ooh, bitching that too many guys do online. Yeah. And I'm actually... Why? One thing that I don't do is bitch online. <laughs> I'll, I'll bitch in person to friends, but like, there's no need to go on Facebook and complain about something or... Like, I've been pretty so down. you were totally cool with the U.S. election, then. Like, you did the same. <laughs> 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 Nothing, I didn't online, actually. Because I feel like, for me, Facebook is for interacting with friends, and it's really for networking and socializing. And I kind of get pissed off and don't give a fuck when people go all, like, completely off the rails on Facebook. Or vague book. Or vague booking. Like, yeah, I'm just, oh, uh, today's been one of those days. And then... There's actually words for all these things you're saying. That's what's amazing to me. <laughs> well, yeah, this whole, like, vague booking thing, and then just to, like, elicit people to ask them, what's wrong, man? Oh, okay, I get you now, okay. Yeah. Right? And you're just like, well, first off... I just didn't know how to turn that Fuck y'all. So, Mike, what friggin' variant do I want to make? Two lawns? What? Two lawns. Two lawns. Uh, I don't know. I don't like the two lawns myself. That's I feel like so I'm Mike's gonna make... lose. I like the tapis and uh, I really like the Lima. You really oh, want to have a couple of Limas. Ping, yeah, your active ping, uh, forget. Is the Lima A, B, or C? It's. Uh, what? You should have instructions and it lists them off for you. Yeah, on the back side. It'll flip it over. Give you the breakdown. So the Lima is. A it's up to you, Tom. Really. It's how you like to play. The Tapai are, are right. all rounders. Nothing really special, but they're all rounders. So the reason that I ask is because yeah. I haven't really looked. I don't know what any okay. of this shit okay. does. Okay, uh, so the Tepe is close combat is okay. basically what it is. You, you get close, and your close action, I think it's a D6 plus 2 per frigate, which is a lot. You've got the rule book, though, haven't so you? So four two lawns wouldn't be a bad idea then, hey? No, it's, the it's not. They're not horrible. They're okay. They're just not my my style, I guess is the word. Well, I'm getting two Limas and four New Orleans. I get six more frigates I can build. So what I'm thinking then, I'm either going to go with, I'll do this four New Orleans, I'll do the two Limas, and then I'm either doing two Jakartas and four Taipeis, or six Taipeis. Or he just moved back into the city, I don't know if you know. Oh, did he? Yeah, he moved, he got back on Wednesday, oh. I don't know if it was last week. Ori Johnston, he's a really great guy, like, plays War Machine for all the right reasons, I went to Lock and Load with him last year. And, oh, okay. Um, he's Living a good friend of mine, but he's living up, in, living up in like Fort St. John. Oh god. <laughs> and when I say he gives a fuck about the background, I don't mean you have to read all the all the lore, but like choosing an army that kind of makes sense to be an army. Yeah. Not just what is what is the most powerful power. Yeah. Power gamer list I can. I mean, like my Damiano uh, Steelheads list. Exactly. Right. Or like if you were going to take a Scar list, you would take Revenant Crew and, as well as Sedexis. Yeah. Right. Instead of just like all of the things that make her army the best. Instead of just like fucking Bay Knights with everyone, right? Right. 
Like, if you're taking Asphyxius, take Bane Knights. That makes fucking sense. But, like, I don't know. Anyway, so we've got him. We've got a, you and me. Um, it sounds like Elliot. Elliot would be super on board for that. I know a handful of guys that are on the fence about the game. Yeah. Because of the community, so we could actually, even if we got like eight to twelve players that were pseudo regular, we could just run small events out of small venues and right, and just enjoy the game for what it is. Right. Maybe try out some of the alternate formats they have now, like the one on a three by three board instead of the four by four. Right. Because we've reached, I think, kind of close to critical mass. Because like the War Machine community is pretty large locally. It is enormous. Um, but I'll tell you what, before I do that, I want to try Drop Zone. <laughs> now that oh, hell, yeah, dude. Now that, I've, now that I've painted some stuff up, I want to play it. I will play Drop Zone against you any day. Yeah. <laughs> I would rather play Drop Zone than War Machine. It's yeah. love. Yeah, it's a good balance game. I like it. But I think there's going to be a point where I want Silly Robot Smash. Yeah. And Silly Robot Smash doesn't exist in Drop Zone. Right. Because oh, their yeah. combat mechanics are probably one of the weakest points. Like, one of the best things about War Machine are their combat mechanics. Yeah, sure. Like, especially with power attacks and, like, grapples and throwing and smashing yeah. and, pop, like, all of that stuff that Jax can do yeah. makes the game really exciting for me. Right. Um, whereas uh, Drop Zone is all about tactically maneuvering your army, which right. is a really satisfying game, just, but it's not quite the same giggle. Oh, just for the record, Chicken and Donuts is not as much as it's sought out to be. Not, oh, as good as, not as but, good as chicken uh, and waffles. Uh, what was that place? Uh, you're talking about the one just off of White Avenue, yeah. up uh, uh, next to the Strathcona Market. Yes. Meat? Uh, no. What's it called? It's uh, called uh, No Mercy. No Mercy. I think it's no called mercy. mercy. No Mercy. Right. Yeah. And not good. No, it wasn't good, but it was. <sighs> so I could go buy a bucket of chicken and some donuts, and I'd be just as good. So eating <laughs> chicken and donuts is actually what you're telling me. Yeah, they actually serve chicken and donuts. It's way overpriced, so it's two pieces of chicken, one donut, 18 bucks. What? Whoa. Yeah, that's, I'm like, okay, I'm expecting, it's like 18 bucks. It's like, yeah, what the hell, I'll try it out. It's, it's, yeah. it's like, where's the rest of it? Oh, that's it. Because <laughs> Swiss Chalet is not cheap. Swiss Chalet is not good. <laughs> <laughs> and so you got to make sure Swiss Chalet. Rubber Eagle, right? Dirty, dirty Bird? Dirty Bird. Dirty, dirty Bird. Bird, I believe. I but like... There was Jay's story about catching a guy fucking a chicken yeah. in a cooler. And then I, after that, after that, I have not been Hold interested on. in going... Was it a live chicken or a dead chicken? Oh, it was dead. It was, it was dead. It was frozen in a cooler. <laughs> fucking like, but the way he described it was amazing. You're like, so here's Jay. He's like, a guy's about my size, and he just walks into this back room, and this guy's going to town on this fucking uh, chicken. Hold and on, what, what was he doing? Does he work there? Jay's the, like, regional manager oh, and to, like, check the place out. And so he walks in, sees that, like, takes a sec, like, goes, like, leaves, closes the door, like, takes a second, goes back in, like, you know you're fired, right? <laughs> yeah, pull up your pants and come out and talk to me. Mike's built every model, and Kevin's built every model that I'm sitting down to build. They're, right they're not that bad either. Yeah, no, you but you know what I mean, though, right? Model in a while playing War Machine, but you know. Uh, shut the fuck up, Malifaux <laughs> beats the shit out of complex models. <laughs> yeah, Malifaux is the worst. Before but you blew any, or you're no, doing frigates Steve, first, But right? the problem yeah. is, when there's four variants per sprue of how to build it, and I don't know what the, how the fuck oh, that works. Fair. That's fair. It's like the Battle of Gothic stuff where you build yeah. the wrong panel in. It's like building a Battle of Gothic model, isn't it? Now Very I mean, similar. Three, yeah. Because the side, yeah. the side yeah, things. Because of the side swap outs and the, the, the bits. You could magnetize it, but uh, I just don't. I mean, it's not that shot. big. Yeah, it's I'd not rather spend the extra 60 bucks, buy three new cruisers, and four more frigates, and go from there. I hate magnetizing. This is fantastic. Where I do do it shelves? still. I did it on the, uh, the Avalon, awesome but that's just right, the yeah, reason I magnetize it so the turrets can turn mm -hmm. for <laughs> Playboy. So. Cool. Well, I have tons of work to do before Vegas, and I hear you're heading down too, hey? Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. Now, are you staying in the Cosmopolitan? Uh, we stayed in the Cosmo last year. Are um, you doing that again? I, uh, it's really pricey. We didn't get on the uh, deal soon enough. For some reason, this year, they're, they seem to be a lot more expensive than last year. Mm. Um, so we're not sure. We were looking, actually, we were thinking Bellagio would be the place to go, because it's a little closer, but it's even more expensive. Yeah. You know, Bellagio's. Apparently, the Iron Warriors, everybody's like, they look super cool and fluffy to play, but they're actually not, like, the best of the book. Apparently, there's some stuff in there that's absolutely... Night Lords are apparently pretty ridiculous. Yeah, out of control. Night Lords are like, oh, yeah, we're going to play Night Fight. 
Yeah. But, like, again, I'm not going to play competitive 40k ever again. It's not going to be a 40k tournament. Also, yeah, 40k tournaments, that's the other thing that people are... Oh, trust me. If... There's no reason when I could, any time there's a 40k tournament, there's always going to be either a drop zone, or a Malifaux, or a War Machine, or something else going on that I'm just going to play instead. Just you wait. Just you wait. Why, the, okay, Steve, why would I play the 40k? Because I have a feeling 8th Ed's going to get you excited about the game. More excited than the games that I truly love? Possibly. Steve, so, so, uh... You and I don't know each other, uh, mm -hmm. but I have learned from Elliot that you and I were working at Bioware at the same time. Sure were, yeah. Yeah, you uh, you and Elliot were on the uh, Star Wars project. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I was... How long were you there for? Uh, three years. Three years? Yeah. Yeah, I worked uh, off and on for three years while I was going to school. Okay. Yeah, Were so. you in that uh, third floor QA pit there? Sure was. Okay. Yeah, with Nathan Matichuk. He was my favorite human ever, because he's the guy that had, like... Have you ever told you he made the Matichek story, Steve? No. <laughs> he had these, like, super religious parents. Yeah. And this, like, super trashy girl a friend in high school. And they'd be like... They had a knack for getting caught with their pants down in a parked car every time. Yeah, I have actually heard that story from Nathan. He's no longer uh, with that girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. He's no longer with those parents. <laughs> that's no, because didn't he go like Jehovah Witness or something? No, he married a girl that's uh, pretty religious. Uh, but she's actually really nice. Quite like her. Not super trashy. No, not at all. <laughs> Less trashy. The, nice fact, trashy. I would say the opposite of trashy. The, uh, Chic trashy. Fairly religious mom now. I have officially four ships built. Dun, dun, dun. The frigates are pretty easy to do. So I'm starting with them to get myself like... Warmed up. Yeah, when you that, do the cruiser, you uh, the first three parts, do them all together because that's, and make sure you place the centerpiece first. Yeah, I'm going in pinky first. I'm doing this. The, I'm doing this the right way. So you guys seen the My Little Pony um, Army? Space Marine Army? Yeah, that's up to two. Sale. Two other people that don't play these games have messaged me that. Amber messaged me. Amber that. messaged me that, and Mike messaged me that. Yeah. yeah. More importantly, is it how much is it listed for? I can find out. I didn't actually check. I saw that and just immediately like shook my head and was like, no. Well, I'm um, 1800 or best offer. That's not bad, actually. It's just, unfortunately, <laughs> you know, to paint straight. I think it's pretty bad. Over. It's also, like, not painted well, either. Okay. Is it listed painted as well. a pro-painted army? No, no, it's, I've seen a lot of stuff that's like, oh, a pro-painted army. It's like... Catch Your shit. idea of pro and my idea of pro way <laughs> different. Oh, it wears yeah. me out when some of the actual like real <coughs> artists talk about things as pro painted or pro painters. I know, I hear you. Because all I think of is eBay and how it is the least apt description you can possibly. Whenever I hear pro painted, I think of that Space Marine meme where it just says pro painted with the dude that <laughs> just the worst thing in the world. Ward and I once had a painting company that fell apart within like a year. Yeah, we were, yeah. Like, we're like, I'm done. I don't this is not anymore. fun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ward, the customer's wondering where his project is. Well, I'll get to it next year. Yeah, it'll happen at some point. Phil Harlow's badgered me into doing a commission for his Empire Army, and I was like, I don't really do this anymore, and I threw in a number that I thought was going to be way too high, and he... he didn't, probably didn't bat an eye. He didn't bat an eye at all. Yeah, but you've like, seen how much he's shit. bought. He's bought that, that really beautiful... Uh, was it? It was a Death Guard army too. Yeah. Way back then. Uh, no, it was the uh, Lamenters. Lamenters. You're talking about. What's that? Lamenters, the yellow one. The, the Lamenters. One. And he bought okay, one yeah, of Steve Hall's yeah, yeah. old uh, work yeah. armies. It was. It was his he first German, yeah. I think he went to. Great nice. Yeah. It was. Oh, yeah, a yeah. Beautiful army. Like, there's so many things that even five years ago <laughs> we didn't have ready access to or knowledge about that just make everything so much easier. Oh yeah. Like back when we were trying to do airbrush weathering with fucking hairspray and rock salt. Oh dude, I, yeah, yeah. And now we can just use, like, latex or chipping mediums that you can just buy. Yeah, I still, I'm not a fan of the chipping mediums. I think they're okay, but I, I actually like the sponge and the... Uh, I think it depends on the scale. It, it, it depends on exactly what you're doing. Um, I like them for different applications. Fair enough. See, I did all the chipping mediums on the Antarctica fleet. Yeah. And I felt like it was just too aggressive. But that's also how aggressively you're chipping it, right? Yeah, that's also the first time I use the stuff too, so... Right, it's, it's different applications, different strokes. I just felt like building some drop fleet right now. Because I, I find that I am m most likely to assemble things 
when I'm in a group setting because yes. I hate building models. Yes. Whereas painting those elf dudes is kind of fun, so like doing that at home by myself is actually an enjoyable task. With his pants off. Whereas doing this shit. Pants off, dance off. I would pull my goddamn brains out <laughs> if I had to build this fleet. Like I built four alpha models last night, and that was a new record for building alpha models. Dude, oh, really? you have got nothing. You need yeah, yeah. Four models in a yeah. sitting. I went with a small elite army and only had to build 20 marines in a sitting. Okay, but having built probably 150 plus marines in my lifetime, mm, that's, the shit that I was building... That's, a, that's not really a claim in this do you, group, dude. Do you have all your marines now? Yeah. But, like, Steve, all I'm saying is I've built enough marines. Like, it's it's a different beast. I'll just mm. tell you right now. That's how that works. Mike, you've built lots of marines and you've built lots of Malifo. Yeah. It's a different thing. Yes. The marines fit together nicer most of the time. I'm just kidding. It's the small parts that kill me. It's the small parts that yeah, kill me. Yeah, no, it's now. these little fiddly things, and you're, like, trying not to break while you're gluing them on. And to give you an idea, I, I Kevin, I don't know if you ever saw any of the Malfa stuff, but there's a little Chihuahua model, and I don't think it's more than four millimeters high. <laughs> but it's, like, five pieces. And oh, it's five on. pieces. Uh, yeah, no, with seriously. its tail being one of said separate pieces. Oh, Jesus. And the That's tail dumb. is maybe, like, a mil long and an eighth of a mil wide. Like, it's... Yeah. That's a sign you should just play 40k. We need to do Drake Zone Commander. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's never been done in miniature or, gaming. Or or we could do uh, the, well, Drop Shot Commander. Oh! oh no, shot. Nice. That would yeah. be the nasty version. <laughs> just the one with like... Everything's a Jaeger bomb sounds like... No, 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 no. First. For me, it would have to be Irish Car Bombs because uh, I can't do Jaeger Bombs. I, I, I can't do uh, Jaeger Bombs either, so Irish Car Bombs Nothing about either of those sounds good, man. Why can't you do Jaeger Bombs? I just don't like Gladiators. Or I don't like egg. Nobody likes egg. Because I can't do the Red Bull. Mm. But Irish Car Bombs, the Baileys and Irish Whiskey and a Guinness. Yeah, yeah. We can do that. Like, the the classes at the LVO were, were good, but... Eh. They weren't in depth at all. Uh, I did not That's like that. That's surprising, because they charge for them. 20, 20 bucks? That's nuts. Something like that. The, um, the Airbrush one I wasn't a big fan of. The Airbrush one was terrible. Uh, Aaron Lovejoy is actually a really good painter. I would take more stuff from him. Yeah, that's and that's um, my game plan. If, uh, if it's his what, weathering, what, what, was, what was he teaching? Weathering. Okay. Have you seen his stuff? I don't know. Okay, if you get, I'll pull up a picture of his uh, crystal brush entry this year. Mm -hmm. It's uh, called a New Hope, and it's an infinity diorama. Oh yeah. Absolutely ridiculous, and uh, yeah, he taught a weathering seminar that I'm still. Uh, using techniques from that I'm really happy with. He does a chipping technique that I've basically stolen and used on almost everything now. It uses a latex um, material to sponge onto your miniature. Okay. And then afterwards, it works like a chipping medium, but you can apply it a little more selectively. Is this from Liquitex? Uh, no, it's actually model mold maker. Oh, okay. Um, it's a, it's like available at uh, Michaels. Michaels. It's it's not a particularly miniature specific. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's funny me and Steve ran into each other at the Michaels. Oh, sure. Both like, shot, both the shot. Monday after we got back from Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> like, we were both buying the hey. <laughs> are you oh, What are you doing here? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. What are you doing here? We took Nothing. the same seminar literally two days before. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. um, So he does that, but then he also works with, um, or has worked with, uh, P, not P3, Secret Weapon, uh, to come up with a line of weathering paints. Yes. He's a big fan of not using technical um, procedures to weather a model, but to actually paint on your weathering. Oh, I see. Okay. And he was showing like how to properly highlight and uh, low light rust, and it was. Oh, hold on! Did he uh, put really this cool. uh, this secret weapon weathering uh, paint set together that yes. I have upstairs? Yeah, percent. That's him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He got to work with it beforehand, and yeah, we got to play with your paints before they were available. I don't know if that makes us cool. And admittedly, Ward, you did paint up the three best helmets of the entire, uh, <laughs> the entire It's true. I did have the three best helmets of the competition. By far. That's, uh... Yeah, no, we I remember when you showed up with your... Your, your brush Contribution <laughs> to the painting challenge. You had three helmets on toothpicks. And we were just like, are you kidding me? Really? This is it? Here's my brushes. God damn it. It is really... Did you have a build in mind with your Scourge? No. Not at all. That's right. I want... I want play once, yes, play the game. just get an idea of what yeah. happens in the game, and then... Yeah, there's so much stuff out now. It's not a, that's not a bad idea. There's so much No, there's one I need. I need the, the missile firing worms. The, the missile worms. Oh, that's, you do need those, because they're just... Uh, 
They're so cool. That's just straight up not an optional unit. You get to fuck surgery. buildings. <laughs> you, Do you know no, what they're just, based on, right? You just they're based on the corruptor stuff. missiles in here. Oh, oh my god. god. Really? Oh, yeah. uh, razor worm stuff. Uh, you got it. Yeah, yeah. But they've got little drop, little drop ships that just implant directly into buildings. Well, they shoot torpedoes into buildings. It's actually a ranged attack. And you have to hit. Yeah. But it's a two plus to hit, so you're usually pretty. You should be okay. Either way, the razor worms are good at penetrating. Well, if you give, got a case of worms after you've been penetrated, things have gone wrong. <laughs> uh, GW West Ed, so Steve can get the cannon S. Yeah. They're getting five, hey? Well, and that's when? Saturday? Yeah. Can you check the hours? I was not paying attention to the website. I thought like I'd at least have like maybe an hour to figure out what I wanted. It was like five minutes. Yeah. No, it wasn't eight, even. Eight no, minutes sold out. Like Dan didn't have enough time to order a second and he had his page queued and ready to go. That's How far did you get? Oh, you've yeah, got a you. fair bit. Are these the gate? Yeah. Or those are like the frigate uh, the gates. Yeah, you, Mike is a paints at a ridiculous, or even assembles at a ridiculous pace. <laughs> oh, man. Come on. Come on, what? What? These little pieces! What? My fingers are not designed for this shit. Ward, I have a problem. Okay, hang on. Right oh, there. stop it. Those what? are way better than Malifo models are. You can what do Malifo, you can do this. I have total faith in you. No, He's gonna like, fuck it up. I can do it, but this is fucking awkward for a man of my size. I'm just saying. I felt really bad um, for Elliot when he bought that um, Fat Mat. Uh, drop some man. Oh shit. Oh, and nice Trevor. Someone started hacking on it. And, and Trevor was just like, what if you just don't buy this mad? It's the worst. And then Ellis just like, oh no. Oh, <laughs> tell me. Yeah. And he was like, I'll tell you, he was really proud when it came in. Because he doesn't order a lot of stuff, right? He, yeah. he immediately got on text and I'm like, my fat mat came in and I'm ready for drop zone. And then and then this this post comes on. Yeah, that's the shittiest mat ever. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> that's not that bad. Which map was it? The fat mat uh, drop zone one? I don't think it was that bad. Well, the, the problem is actually the layout makes it really hard to set up buildings in a meaningful way. This, yeah, the, they've yeah. got a lot of parking lots, it looks like. Well, it's great depending it's on basically the a Joni Mitchell song. <laughs> Thank you. I did not get that one. <laughs> <in my head. laughs> That's great. It's okay, it's a bit of an older joke. I was going to say, is okay. this an age specific reference? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, fun fact, uh, my mom used to hang out with Joni Mitchell. What? Yeah. Well, I guess it makes sense, considering yeah. she's very Saskatchewan. Yeah, uh, my, my, uh, my mom uh, grew up in uh, Saskatoon, and, uh, <coughs> and, uh, anyway, they used to go out, uh, look for men together when she was in high school. Nice. So your, your mom Me was too. Joni Mitchell's wing lady? Yes. <laughs> That, see, I, I actually, because Joni Mitchell's one of my favorite singers of all time. Because she's got a very beautiful voice. Well, he was, um, he was talking to, I think, Dave Clark in BC, and Dave was just, like, talking about how he wanted to repaint his sisters a battle. And he's just on the phone, and he's like, yelling, he's like, Don't strip your sisters! <laughs> <laughs> and we're all kind of like, mm, Probably not the best phrasing. I'm really happy that uh, there's a fleet game that doesn't suck. Battlefleet Gothic doesn't suck. Yeah, but Battlefleet Gothic doesn't exist. Yeah, it doesn't suck. It's actually a good rule set. Okay, but again, it doesn't exist. It's not like you can readily get a lot of those models. Well, weren't they weren't they reinvigorating all specialist games yes. ideally? No, Battlefleet Gothic is coming back. They, they reinvigorated the title specialist games for Blood Bowl. For Blood Bowl, but they're also planning others. But yeah. they haven't specified which one. They, they haven't specified all of them, and they have come out and said it's quite likely that some of them will never come back. Which is likely going to be more time in Necromunda. Uh, I, I, would, really, I, would I would say Epic. Warmaster. I would have Epic, Epic and Warmaster, Warmaster I don't think are coming back, but they specifically in their press release when they said it was coming back mentioned Battlefleet Gothic, Blood Bowl, and I think, was it Wartime? Yep. Yeah. Okay. It was one of the other skirmishes. Which games. obviously is the biggest oversight from this company ever, because we all know we need Gorkamorka back. Yeah. Although, no, in all honesty... Okay, you want to talk about bad rule sets. That had bad rules. But if you want to talk about a game that's remembered more fondly than any other game that company Man, makes... I had so much fun playing that game. <coughs> the wobbly model syndrome is funny. Um, until it becomes a rule mechanic. <laughs> Although they also are looking at the competitive side of things, because of the General's Compendium and actually being at the LBO, which is weird. I don't 
I don't really know how trying to do trying to do both hasn't worked for them in the past. So I'm not really. Well, sure. I think because they they're able to do a pretty solid separation, right? Like it's they're not trying to make it a competitive game in the core rulebook. They have the general's compendium, which is a separate thing from the core rulebook. Yeah, I, I like I said, I, I'm interested to see how it plays out. Um, right now, it's doing well, but I'm, I'm not. They tried this before. I feel like 140k, isn't it? I don't think they have tried it before, actually. Yeah, they had their not own really. tournament system. Their own. They did the whole grand tournaments and toured around the country. I'd say that's pretty good trying it out. I think that's a little bit different, though, because that was designed just to be their own premier events. It wasn't necessarily something that was endorsed to be a be all. That wasn't level. Games Day. They had like the final grand tournament thrown of skulls in Vegas, man. Like it was a league, the Hall of Heroes and that kind of stuff. Like I, I think that was pretty. But Hall of Heroes didn't really have like much for a rule set. Yeah, they had their own. They had their own scenarios. No, they had a couple scenarios, but it wasn't like its own separate rule set. Well, that's General's Companion isn't its own separate rule set. It's just effectively a couple scenarios and a way to choose your army. And points cost for everything. <coughs> yeah, and point. When there's not, it's not just that though. That's only yeah, that's a handful of pages. That's only a handful of pages in that book. Yeah, there's all kinds of other play styles in that book. You're right? totally right. There's there's a lot of there. I think the. I think they've done this before, and I, I'm just saying, I think it's good, and I'm excited about it, because I miss those old things, but I'm just interested to see how it turns out, that's all. Their, their path to glory is a little off, though. <laughs> Which, what's the path to glory? That's where you start with the war band, and you go... Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the one that I actually want to play. <gasps> oh, you piece of shit, dog. Love you too, Tom. Love you too, buddy. Well, it says to assemble in this order, but this order is fucking bullshit. I thought you were going to ask me once you got past that point. Did you say to do that? No, you said you were going to, I'll get to this point, and then you will, we'll talk, ask you again what's going to happen. Mike's not mad, point. he's disappointed. I'm dis Remember, yeah, I'm disappointed. softer voice. Okay, so no, but it's like, it says... You're trying to ask me. Ask me. Oh, you're really, ask Tom? Me. Really? I, Just the so defeat in Mike's voice. I'm going to be sadness and defeat. You probably don't want to hear this word, but all of those shades of red look very close. Yeah, I know! They look, like, I'm just looking at the pots of paint. I'm not looking at the There's miniatures. I'm just looking at the pots of paint. And I'm, I'm saying to myself, the shades of red look really close. There is a, there is a progression there, <laughs> but I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's the important thing, right? Yeah. You know something's going on there. Where are you coming to the movie tomorrow night? Uh, no, because Kevin didn't invite me. The <laughs> ass hat. Not this Kevin. You're, you're cool. Oh, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> Kevin. I should I should <laughs> <have>. <laughs> Fuck, this guy who invited me over? Such what an asshole. <laughs> that is a... Fernando Emmanuel Ruiz miniature. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Prince Rurik, so he's one of the original um, uh, sort of Finnish tribes people that um, conquered, I think, the Muscovy region. Okay. Um, so a Russian historical sort of folk hero type thing. Is a Rus? Yeah. Okay. Who who produces the uh, who, who manufactures the sculpt? Uh, Fer, the, okay. the company. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I'm not sure if they contract out to a third party. As far as I know, uh, no. The, the sculptor is Fer, and his miniature is produced through the company branded as Fer. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's done by another company that actually does the packaging and that kind of stuff. Is this free handed in here? Yeah, he's not done. He's just been something I've been working on. So no, I'm just going to tell people. I'm just going to tell people it's done. It's like this is Steve's final work. <laughs> final form. <laughs> his sword isn't finished yet at all, though. I have, that's just his base airbrush. For a show, uh, I'm gonna enter it for Crystal Brush in Vegas. Cool. I don't think it's gonna go very far because it's a really weird competition. There's a lot of good painters, and there's a lot of good painters that are really good friends with each other. Yeah, that judge. was weird last was year. Really weird. <coughs> Everybody that was a judge won another category. Oh come on! Yeah, that's how. That, that's an LVO. Is. Yeah, that's bullshit. That was the Draconic Awards. That wasn't uh, Crystal Brush, though, was it? I think it was uh, a qualifier. Draconic is a qualifier for Crystal Brush. It's yeah, a qualifier. But it's, it's a qualifier, so it's not quite Crystal Brush. But no, the armies come together surprisingly quick, even when you're trying to go from like just the initial army starter box. Oh yeah, I know. I mean, like crazy. Yes, this, this, this is all 10, 12 millimeter up here, and honestly, yeah. all of this was done in two weekends. It was yeah. very, very quick work. Yeah, like my yep. 1500 point army, which I think looks pretty good, was done in... Four days? Realistically, the most of the work was done in two and a half days, and then there was like a couple hours 
on two nights of me just being like looking at it, having time before the tournament, and just fucking adding a few things here and there. Yeah, resistance is nice for that. The only thing that slowed me down on the Shaltari that took longer than that is the stupid sails, like the weird veins that yeah. come out. Those things are not Fun. great. The detail on them is not awesome. No, but you just like you did a bit of like a quick wet brush kind of thing on yeah. them. No, it turned out, but they really slow you down because there's a lot of them. Well, I guess if if you and Elliot are going to be ready to rock for drop zone by then, like amongst the guys that we know right here, that's six I players for that to tournament. Rock. You've been talking about you want to run this campaign thing or do more campaigns. We should do a campaign day. Yeah, not a fucking tournament. Sure. God. I'm sold. Because it sounds like a lot of people are going to be a little new. You can also get away with having very little infantry if you're willing to play a demolition game, and the Scourge do that surprisingly well. Or if you go, if you load up on more like destroyers, then just like the basic Scourge infantry can also uh, help. Yeah, you can do because the, they're exotic. They're just part of the main HQ group, yeah, right? But yeah. you can fly two of them in with two yeah. each, and nothing will be able to kill them right away. You have to, like, yeah. uh, to give you an example, to kill two destroyer bases, you either have to blow up the building they're in, <laughs> sure. or yeah. send three to four times the amount of infantry uh, there. Okay. Even the, s the second most elite infantry in the game is the Sheltari Firstborns, and you probably need two to one to deal with destroyers. Right. Right. They are... The only infantry ridiculous. in my army that would have a fucking chance in hell would be my Berserkers, just because they have the D3 plus one attacks each. Yeah, except their armor's five, so you wound them on six. Recon Quest 1 and Recon Quest 2. These yes. are the right. two bucks. Right? Yeah. And it also yeah. gives you all the fluff and history of what happened. And yeah. Which Kevin gives zero fucks about. Ze like, ze like negative one fucks. Okay. <laughs> the thing that really weirds me out about Sheltari is the, the they're really one of the only, they're the only army in the game that has a universal pass passive saves for almost everything. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's turns where, because <laughs> the thing about... I love this. The thing this is about, like my favorite thing. The thing about this game is you do not roll a high volume of dice. Yeah. Right? Like, it'll be, because most things only have... One, or two, one or two wounds. Most things only have one or two shots. Yeah. But normally, if you like hit with a gun, wound with a gun, it's probably going to kill something. Yeah. yeah. Um, Shaltari, because of their five up passive saves, are very prone to swinging luck in turns. Like violently. And so, like, there'll be turns where you're like, this army's fucking broken. I hate mm -hmm. playing against them. This other turn where they just all die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's there's literally nothing either player can do. But the thing is, when it goes in the Shaltari players. Like when something you just need it to live, and that's what the game hinges on, and you just get hot with your passive saves, and then it murders everything. You're just like, this army is the best thing ever. I, <laughs> I want to play nothing other than this army. So, so it's Boom Howler. Yeah, it's yeah, awesome. yeah. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> but it's but the thing is, if you like take that step back and you're like, this is a game, you can look at those moments and laugh and have a good time. No, because yeah. they're TSN turning points. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're awesome. Yeah. If you look at it like, I want this game to be super balanced so that I can know that I won because no, of my amazingness. No, no, that's, that's not... That's... Then you're playing miniature games for the wrong reason. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, there's one where it's a monorail. Yeah. And you occur to roll your seal. You monorail. see the model, right? Monorail. Well, one monorail. of the things is, is you monorail. have to get in the monorail, monorail. Yeah. grab the intel, and get out. But, of course, at the same time, the other guy's room. trying to do the same thing, so you're fighting inside a train as it zips across oh, the city. And, and it's moving? Yes. It's Snowpiercer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good scenario. So, are they like um, a kit, a space station kit. How many space stations can you build out of a kit? You could probably build ten of you made all small. Oh, mm -hmm. Depending, yeah, it just depends on how big you want to make. Because, like, uh, you see how big the cruiser spruce. You get four spruce and they're these? double the size of the thing, and it's just packed with mm. stuff. Right? Cool. Okay, yeah. that's that'll do. Uh, that's okay, cool. so it'll be third, uh, third Thursday, January. So, Mike, you walking home, or do you want to ride? Sure, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. I'm walking home. It's a little yeah, no, I'm dangerous not. today. Or are you walking close home? enough for a walk? No. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> I live three or four he blocks. He lives right close to me. He walks to my place all the time. Okay, okay.